Come on, dinosaur egg. Oh. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my newest dumb idea. After learning how painful it was to harvest everything from the mines from floor 1 to 120, I decided it would be fun to do that whole idea again, but this time using everything on a Stardew Valley map. And to clarify, that does not include the mines. I'm talking about everything out here, which is why I've started a brand new farm. I'm going to cut down every single tree, I'm going to smash every rock, I'm going to pick up every piece of forageable on the ground, I'm going to hoe every piece of dirt. Just so we can get some kind of idea of how much the game actually gives you on your very first day. Well, it's not actually going to be my very first day. I'm going to build a tractor to do this and that's going to take three days. So we're going to do it a few days into the game, but the value is pretty much going to be the same. Tractor barn is started. I just spawned all the items I needed for that into existence and then sold them again. I'm back to my original 500 gold to keep this all nice and even. I am, of course, going to collect a lot of stuff in my backpack as we're doing this. So I'm going to store most of everything in here. I'm going to keep a few things on me because my tractor simply needs a few things. Actually, I guess we're going to have to go like that and just come back to the bin a lot. Or maybe actually see if I can buy a bigger backpack right away. That was something I never considered, but I'm going to need more room. No time for introductions. How much is the backpack? 2,000 gold. Wherever am I going to come up with 2,000 gold? Then I believe the second one is 10,000. Yes, 10,000 gold well spent for more slots. Just like that, we have 36 spaces available. Leah, get out of the way. And back to 500 gold again. A few more days, tractor barn's gonna be done and we're gonna start harvesting. So we're good to go. The first thing we're gonna pick up is the parsnips because technically the game did give us those those artists lying on the ground. So this is gonna be the first thing we throw in the bin. Then we're gonna hop on that tractor, start driving around, see all the fun stuff we can harvest. I do have this set to a width of five spaces because yesterday I was doing 20 and the game didn't like that very much. Obviously stuff like the grass is just gonna get cut down but the weeds are actually gonna get absorbed. The tractor is going to make this a lot easier. I could also just use bombs and I might at some point. The last thing I'm going to use is the hoe. If I switch back and forth between the hoe and the pickaxe, I'm going to start going over spots twice and getting extra items. And I don't want to do that. I just want to see the straight value of things. Iridium tools are the only way to do this. That's much faster. The quality of the tools does actually have an effect on what you're cutting down, even with the tractor. Hey, a geode. How about that? Those are definitely going to get sold. And in case you're wondering, the pickaxe does work for most of everything. It will knock up the weeds. It just won't cut down the grass. That's only the really thing you need the scythe for is all the grass on the ground. This last bit of grass is the last of the field. I circled my way around in typical inefficient fashion. I wonder what my luck is today. It should be actually perfect luck today. The highest luck. We're going to do this on the highest luck day. According to my mod, it should still be on. Yeah, max daily luck. So we have max luck. What do we find from our field? This. We got a stack of wood, a half stack of rocks. That's probably honestly going to be most of the value in this again. The geodes would be worth something. You know what? We're going to process the geodes today. I think that's going to be worth it. Like I said, you can just sell them. It's worth slightly more to process them. So we're going to do that. Everything else though is just getting sold. Before we leave the farm, however, we're going to hoe it all up. But before we do that, we're going to remember to freeze time. That way it doesn't get dark. Because I don't like recording in the dark because it scares me. The only thing we're going to get from hoeing up the farm is clay. But clay is still worth something and I need it. Unfortunately, these artifact spots are going to have to be manually hoed, but they will give me artifacts. So those are going to get sold for a little bit of extra. One thing I do realize I need to add is two more magnet rings because I just want the extra sucky power. All right, back to the bin. We haven't even left the farm yet. I'm going to have to go see Clint before too long, but we're going to go see him at the end because we're going to collect geodes between now and then. But we did manage to get 112 clays, so that's actually some kind of value. I'm not sure how much each one is worth, but it is worth something. We're going to start working our way north. We're probably going to do this north to south to keep it nice and organized. I think I'll keep track of it best that way. I am going to check areas like that just in case I'm overlooking anything. We did actually miss a few spots up there. Now basically I just need to drive around with my pickaxe out because that should knock down anything on the ground. I'll pick up any forgeables I see and then when I'm finally done an area, I'm going to hoe it to be sure I'm done. That way if I come back to any hoed area, I know I've already been there. The mark of the hoe is a sign of mumps. Obviously, being this early in the game, places like the bathhouse area aren't open yet, so those just aren't going to be done right now. These trees on the island, not too sure if I'm going to be able to gather their wood. Not so much. I got a little bit of it. That counts. Hoe time. Mostly just clay. Got a little more clay for my effort. Now to go find some trees. Aw oh, man, my tractor won't fit through the gap. I gotta manually walk in, summon the tractor back, and then do it again. Then I gotta walk out and summon the tractor back. Life is tough. Not actually too much up in this area, so I'm just gonna hoe it all now. Then we're gonna move down into the town area. To be honest, I don't think the town itself has very much for me. I got my axe out, but I don't know if there's any trees I can even cut down here. I think it's mostly gonna be hoeing the ground and checking the garbage cans, no doubt. And forageables, can't forget the forageables. Well, we can at least check to find a valuable artifact, no doubt. Nope, just a book. Well, let's pull the line, let's check the garbage cans, and then we're just gonna hoe up all the dirt in town. Come on, dinosaur egg. Oh. 
Well, you know what? I didn't want the book anyway. By the way, that artifact spot had a 0% chance of giving me a dinosaur egg. Can anyone tell me why? Well, all right. Town is done. The northern area of the map is done. This is what I have to show for it so far. I was somehow picturing there being more stuff. We do still have to do the forest to the south, and that's going to be a lot of trees and stuff. One more piece of fiber there, apparently. Let's do the bus stop really quick before I forget. The bus stop is surprisingly overlooked quite often just because of where it is. People tend to walk through it or around it. And there's a lot of good forgeables here a lot of the time. Don't forget the bus stop, everyone. Appreciate Pam for what she is. I suppose we'll move on to the beach. There's going to be a few forgeables here. I'm not going to fix up the bridge to the right because that's technically an unlockable area and in the early stages of the game, you're not going to unlock it. I just want to see what the game gives you straight away. If you gotta unlock it, it's not the game giving it to you. The beach is mostly just gonna give me a bunch of clay. That is all the holdable areas, done. And that mostly just leaves this fun little area. This area probably is actually gonna be somewhat valuable because there's lots of debris on the ground, there could be lots of forgeables, there are spring onions, and there's gonna be a lot of clay. Because there's a lot of dirt down here. Turns out I could even cut down a tree that's up on the hill. That seems odd to me, normally things that are out of the map are really inaccessible. Alright, here's where my stupid ideas hit a little bit of a hiccup. I realized I can cut that tree. Now, there's a few problems with that. It gives me hardwood, which you wouldn't normally get in the first few days of you playing because you need an upgraded axe to do that. I've already removed the hardwood from my farm. The game did technically give it to me, but I needed an upgraded axe to get it. Okay, I've gone ahead and removed that, but I'm not going to do the secret woods themselves because you're not going to have access to it on the first day. I know you're not going to be able to chop the hardwood on the first day anyway, but I've kind of already done that. And the game did technically just give it to me, so whatever, let's just go with that. Alright, these cows never get hoed dirt. They're gonna be so happy. At this point, I'm really just a clay hunter mostly. I feel like that's actually maybe where most of the value is gonna come from in this. Hoe job complete. I'm gonna go throw everything in the bin, except the geodes. We're gonna go process those, and then we're gonna see the value of what the game gives you in your first few days. Hopefully I have enough money to do this. What do they cost each? 25? Might have to cheat things a little bit, but we'll find out. I think a petrified slime is actually fairly valuable, so that's interesting. Maybe the geodes are going to be the most valuable thing here after all. But we'll find out tonight. Everything I gathered in the bin. Quick look at the map to make sure I haven't missed any areas. I think I got it all. Everything that is accessible in this early game, the first few days. And we're going to bed in my massive one room house. Foraging leveled up. Not that surprising. Twice because I cut down so many trees. Mining from the rocks. Level 3 foraging. Level 4 foraging. Wow, level 4 foraging in one day. Level 5 foraging. Um, interesting. Would you go with wood worth more then? No, let's just see the base value. You can assume wood's going to be worth more. That's actually kind of crazy though. Five levels of foraging in one single day. The value is actually way higher than I thought it was going to be. 18,100. It's all in the materials like I thought it would be. Hardwood, which wouldn't normally be an early game thing, but there you go. 1,410. But the wood, there's 4,000 right there. More wood there. Another 600. The wood there, another 2,000, stones 1,000, the clay 4,000. Impressive. So this would actually be a good idea for anyone in the early game to do some of that stuff. The mining, I did actually make quite a bit off the mining too, 1,240. It's not a lot, but for the early game, if you could smash a bunch of rocks and find some geodes, sure, why not? The forging is worth more, however, so stick to foraging before you do that. Uh, the sap again, which actually comes from cutting down trees, really, so... Take that for what it's worth, but 18,199, that is a lot more than I thought it was going to be. Now, you're not going to be able to do what I just did on your first day because it's just going to take too much time and energy. Maybe if you had like a big multiplayer farm and you had everyone just focused on this, sure. Well, because I'm me and just never learn. We're going to do this whole thing again, but on a file that's maybe been sitting for a few years, just growing a bunch of crap to see the difference in value. Year 172, and this one has not had the debris cleared in a long time. Plus, this will have more of the areas unlocked. And already, the first issue I realized is I have a gold clock on this farm. So yeah, some stuff would spawn, like grass, but none of the debris or trees would spawn. The gold clock stops trees from spreading, growing, etc. So I do have a lot of truffles, which isn't something the game gives me, but I do have a lot of meteorites, which is something the game gives me. So we're gonna have to go ahead and say goodbye to one very expensive gold clock. It won't let me take it away. Oh, there it goes. Now here's how we fix this little hiccup. We have no more gold clocks, so debris is going to spawn again, and I've just reinstalled a mod that makes trees grow basically instantly. As soon as they're seeded, the next day they'll be fully grown and ready to reseed the area next to them. So we're just going to go ahead and skip to, uh, let's say spring of next year. Another thing I'm going to do really quick is actually remove a bunch of this grass, because the more grass there is, the less debris is going to grow, because it's simply occupying the space that the debris wants to grow in. Plus, the pigs enjoy eating it, and I don't want the pigs to have enjoyment. Here we are, back around on the 3rd of spring. 
We do have a fair amount of trees, I was honestly expecting quite a bit more than this. So maybe we'll give it one more year, because I really want to take a look at the opposite end of this. When you first start out on a new farm, the field isn't actually that cluttered. It just feels that way because you have basic tools and feel really overwhelmed with things. If you let this thing sit for a few years, it really clutters up fast, and that's what we're going for, so let's give it another year. Another year down the drain, well spent. Enough trees. If I can't walk out my door, I'm gonna assume that's enough trees. Luckily my tractor comes to me. Now it's just a matter of actually getting some tools. I would assume they're in the chest on this file. I never know what I do with my stuff. So let's start the whole process over again, because it wasn't enough fun the first time. We do even have a mushroom tree out there, so that's going to be a little bit of value. I think one of the big differences for this file is going to be all the meteorites, basically, because there are so many of them in my field after hundreds of years. Alright, got all the debris cleared off the farm. Obviously, we got some things like a slime hutch in the way. Not going to worry about that, because just look at all the wood we got. Artifact spot. More clay. As we learned, clay is quite valuable, though. Here's my year 170 whatever farm produced me. I'm not really going to go through it all. You can just take a look for yourself while I'm throwing it out. 108 iridium just from the meteorite, so that's actually pretty impressive. And this part, I'm actually kind of looking forward to. This is going to be a lot of fun because look at all this stuff to smash. We're going to select the pick before we even get on. Here we go. Mine up everything in here. This might be a lot of geodes too. We got diamonds, all sorts of stuff going down the left side. I'm not even going to look through that. We're going to find the value when we throw it in the bin later. I'm actually hoping for less shields at this point because I just don't want to spend the time processing them. It's a really boring task to do. But that was the quarry. We definitely got some geodes. We got some diamonds, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we'll even have to go up to the witch's swamp to see if we can hoe any of that ground. I'm not sure if we can, but we got to try. The train station yielded nothing of interest. Hopefully the witch's swamp is a little better. I should be able to hoe some of this. No? All right. The witch's swamp is unusable. One thing I did just have to do was cut down a bunch of trees that I... Uh, cleverly planted and the paths everywhere so what I did is I cut those down it gave me about a stack of wood so I just threw a stack of wood out I simply just got rid of it I'm gonna have to do probably the same thing here cut these down pay attention to how much wood it gives me on the left and just throw that out because these aren't naturally spawning trees so these shouldn't count for anything definitely an imperfect idea but I'll make it work now it's stuff like this. This is going to be the big difference for the price, for the value. Because I've got so much debris strewn all over the map now, this stuff's really going to start to add up. Extra stacks of rock, wood, and probably geodes, unfortunately. I've already gotten two new ones. So I'm going to have to process those, which is going to take time, but it's certainly going to add to value. This is what happens when you leave the map to do its own thing for hundreds of years. And of course, this far into the game, we can definitely do this side of the beach, which is probably mostly just going to give us a bunch of extra clay. There wasn't much reforgeables here, so it's not going to be a big difference in value. I'm actually a little surprised at the state of this area. Clearly I was in here clearing stuff out not that long ago, which is odd because that doesn't sound like something I'd do. I expected there to be a lot more debris than just this little bit, but I'll take what I can get. I guess this corner in the upper left is still pretty full of debris, but I remember the whole pond being surrounded by stuff, so I'm not really sure what happened to that. Clearly I just went in there and removed it all for some reason. And we are going to do the secret woods, of course. Shouldn't be more than a few forgeables and some hardwood, especially during the spring. I think next we're going to do the bus stop. This is actually going to be one of the final areas. After this, I am going to go ahead and do the desert. It's mostly just going to be clay from the ground, I think. Maybe a few other forgeables, but that's going to be about it. The tractor even works in the bus. That's kind of funny. Uh, let's not go back to Stardew Valley. No, I just got here. Uh, right, this is working out well. Tractor, thank you. It's a little bit buggy, but it does work quite well. Gonna start with the trees. Uh, can we actually... Oh, we can harvest the forageables with the scythe. I wish I knew that a while ago. That would have saved me so much time. Right. That's the desert done. Doesn't look very good because it doesn't hoe up very nicely. But with that, we'll go back, throw everything in the bin, then we'll process the geodes. Alright, 57 geodes to go. This shouldn't take long at all. The final geode. That was actually pretty fast. Uh, there's what I got out of everything. Take a look for yourself. And it's gone. And you'd want to guess on the value of things today? I think that's going to be quite a bit more, but not outrageously much. A lot of value in the wood, hardwood, things like that. Extra area for extra clay, of course. Farming, foraging, iridium is actually going to be a big factor. AD 2000. So a little over four times the value of doing it on your first few days. Uh, obviously lots of wood, the wood just sprouts up everywhere, grows continually. It would have been even more had I let the trees grow even more. But I was just curious to see exactly how much more you get and how much just the map itself is worth. So the basic map was worth something like 17, 18,000. The big whole expansive map left over time can actually make you quite a bit of money. The radium ore is obviously the big one there from all the meteorites. You get about one of those a year, fun fact. Okay, that's it for this one. It was a bit of a crude idea, but I had fun doing it. This was just a curiosity of mine. So that's it. Okay, bye.